Well, good morning. <clears throat> I am uh, trusting that I am live right now. Uh, the uh, Sometimes I have a little indication here that uh, uh, it says end live video, so that must mean I am live right now. So anyhow, it's uh, good to be here with everyone today. I uh, hope uh, everyone is gathered in here well, um, connecting well. Just give everybody a second to get on if anybody wants to join in and uh, be a part of this uh, right now. Uh, we'll just uh, give this another minute as we as we uh, get started. Excellent. Good. Well, today we are uh, we're reading out of Acts chapter thirteen. Our devotion is out of Acts chapter uh, thirteen. So, good morning. Uh, seeing some people uh, jumping on right now. Good morning. It's good to see you. Uh, the uh, so we're going to be reading in Acts chapter thirteen this morning and. Uh, well, thank you, Pastor Charlie. That's really kind of you. I uh, <laughs> keep COVID's been kind to me this season of quarantine, and uh, but doing well. Hey, we're going to be looking in Acts chapter thirteen uh, today, uh, reading verses. I think our devotional is one through twelve. We're just going to look in uh, verses one through three, and I want to read that together with us right now. It says, "Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who is called Niger." Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and set them off. Now the church at Antioch had uh, become the operation center of Saul's ministry, who was soon to become Paul. Uh, Jerusalem was still the mother church, um, but Antioch uh, really became the springboard for what is about to be the missionary endeavors of the early church. Uh, and today I want to focus on verse one, kind of uh, just something that just really jumped out at me as I was reading this through and, and studying these passages, and I want to devote our attention to today. And it's this, is that there's a beautiful diversity in the backgrounds of the leaders gathered there in Antioch. Men gathered from uh, varied areas, a variety of areas. So Let's just look at some of the guys that were gathered there together. Uh, first, we have Barnabas mentioned. Barnabas, uh, the Jew, was first. Uh, we first read about um, in uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 36. He was the one who gave the proceeds of a field he sold. Uh, it brought it to the apostles' feet. Uh, he was a native of Cyprus. Uh, the very first journey they were about to go on, uh, the missionary journey, was to the island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean. And I don't know, raise your hand if you'd like to... Uh, you know, join on that missionary journey. That sounds like a lot of fun, uh, headed to that, the island of Cyprus. Um, he's listed first here, uh, perhaps because as the delegate of the mother church in Jerusalem, uh, he held the priority position. Uh, he certainly came into Antioch, um, you know, with, soon before this and um, uh, with, with the heart of seeing what the Lord was doing there. So second, we have Simeon mentioned. Uh, Simeon was also a Jew, uh, but his Latin nickname, Niger, uh, not only indicates uh, that he was of dark complexion, but also that he moved in Roman circles, uh, that he was in, um, uh, you know, in, in, in the world of, uh, uh, in, in the Roman circles. Um, some have debated, uh, some have debated, good morning, Julia, it's good to see you. Some have debated that he was Simon of Cyrene who carried the cross of Christ. That's highly debated, uh, but uh, some have debated that that was, in fact, the same guy. Uh, we don't know that to be the case. Uh, but he, there he is, a teacher, a prophet in Antioch. Uh, thirdly, we have Lucius, who was from Cyrene, uh, which is in North Africa. Acts chapter 11, verse 20, uh, speaks of the men from Cyrene and Cyprus who are in Antioch preaching the good news of Christ. It says in verse 20 of chapter 11, But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, preaching the Lord Jesus. Uh, so there we have gathered again in Antioch, just a variety of, of people preaching the good news. Lucius is one of these uh, one of these men. Then we have another guy mentioned. His name is Menaean. Menaean, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch. What a brother in the body of Christ was this guy Menaean. Uh, he had high contacts, uh, uh, having been reared uh, with Herod the Tetrarch. Now this is the same Herod, by the way, that beheaded John the Baptist and who treated the Lord so shamefully uh, at the, the mock trial. Um, uh, you know, this is the same Herod. Perhaps, who knows if the day that Jesus was standing before Herod, 
uh, that Menaean wasn't standing there as well. Uh, one, Herod, remained an antagonist, uh, while the other, Menaean, became a disciple. And here he is now in Antioch, one of the teachers and prophets there. Um, at the end of the list, um, for he was last on the scene, uh, we have Saul, a Jew trained in rabbinical schools. Now, when, when Barnabas came to Antioch to see the work of the Lord there, uh, he went and got Saul from Tarsus uh, in chapter 11 and uh, uh, got Saul, and they spent over a year there together. Good morning, uh, good morning, Clyde. It's good to see you. Happy Friday to you. Uh, good to see you this morning. And uh, so the, uh, despite the variety of backgrounds, these men functioned as one together. Uh, they were leaders uh, who were allowing the Holy Spirit to constantly challenge them, provoke them with a kingdom mindset. And uh, my challenge to us today is whether you find yourself in, in a leadership position or you're a disciple simply in the, in the body of Christ, is that you surround yourself with people that provoke you, that challenge you, that draw you close to the Lord and have a kingdom mindset. Um, uh, I don't know if I don't know if I'm there or not. Some people may have lost me, but if I'm if I'm still there, we'll we'll try to we'll try to stay engaged. Uh, to to challenge you, to provoke you, to draw you close to the Lord with a kingdom mindset. Um, it says in verse two, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. And uh, so grateful for those in my life. And surely I'll talk maybe a few stories today about people that have uh, made a real impact in my life that I've surrounded myself with by the grace of God been around my life. Um, one of those people, uh, at least is on here uh, for a little while ago, Pastor Charlie Sweet. Uh, Pastor Charlie Sweet has been instrumental in my life now probably over the last, I don't know, Pastor Charlie, 15 years maybe. Um, before I came up here to the North Country, Pastor Charlie and I had grown close um, when I was working in Gallupville. And uh, he was somebody that I reached out to, um, to, uh, you know, just be somebody that provoked me, challenged me. Uh, if I felt like something was going on in my life, I'd reach out to Pastor Charlie. And uh, it was just, uh, just somebody that was really used by the Lord in my life. I remember calling him the day Benny was born. Uh, Benny was born and Pastor Charlie had uh, just a word of the Lord for Benny and uh, I still carry that to this day. Just so important that we surround ourselves with, with people. Here's a fun question for those that want to participate or, or maybe uh, on, the, uh, on the Facebook thread. Who is somebody or who are some people in your lives that have provoked you in your walk with God? Who are some people that, that have been around your life? You know, in our, in our life, we're, we're surrounded by uh, people in our work in our family, our neighbors, our church. And in all these circles, we find ourselves surrounded by a variety of people. Now, as we surround ourselves with people, are we, are we seeking the Holy Spirit provocation in our relationships? Or are we keeping people at an arm's length in order not to let them get too close? Um, now, clearly some of our relationships and our friendships are with people who don't know Christ. Um, hopefully our friendship and involves the gospel component and sharing the good news of Christ with them, uh, with our friends and, uh, and our family. But it, as it relates to our relationship with the body of Christ, um, are you inviting your brother and sister in the Lord to not only affirm the love of God and affirm you as, a, as you walk with God, but to challenge you where you may be missing it, to challenge you on what might be next in your life, to provoke you to grow closer to the Lord today? You know, again, I think a fun, uh, fun um, uh, homework, if you may, um, fun homework would be simply to say, you know, who are some people? Write down some people in your life right now. Identify some people. Who are those that are in your life either right now or that you'd like to draw closer to in order to provoke you where you need to be uh, provoked? Some, some other scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 Verse 9 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Boy, we need, we need each other. I mean, I look at these guys, Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Menaean, and Saul. These guys were gathering together, worshiping the Lord together, seeking the Holy Spirit together, and asking the Lord 
what's next. They were, they were next. They were just joined together in unity. Psalm 133, verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Uh, just drawing closer together with those in our world. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. I mean, let's be honest. The early church was, was a time of adversity, and yet yeah, these guys, uh, it wasn't, they weren't sitting there licking their wounds. They were there ready to advance the gospel um, for the glory of Jesus Christ and what came next. Uh, they were in adversity, but when it came to the brotherhood, they were provoking each other to going to, you know, the next step in their walk with God. I was going through a very difficult season in my life back around the year 2000. Um, and my difficulties, uh, my difficulties internally were spilling out externally, and uh, it was affecting my relationships with the people around me, um, and uh, just had some difficult moments. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's ever been there, but I found myself at dinner. I think it was like a Ruby Tuesdays or a TGI Fridays uh, with one of my good friends uh, named Chris. I was thinking about this this past week um, because I got to visit Chris, uh, who's presently in the hospital um, fighting cancer, and I uh, encourage you to, um, to pray. If you think of it, pray for my friend named Chris. But at dinner at that time, you know, I was uh, I was in the ministry. Chris was just a he just was a member at the church, but a good friend of mine, and uh, he began to lovingly challenge me to get my head out of the gutter and my own self wallowing, to stop the self the pity party I was in, and you know to lift my head up. And God had a call in my life and a plan, and stop feeling sorry for myself. For myself, um, so grateful for Chris, uh, you know, and to that engagement in my life. Um, now, as we study the passage in Acts chapter 13, we don't see anyone in the pit. We see brothers who are positioned to hear from the Lord and ready to say yes to anything he would speak. But we don't know the state of where these guys were at. They just were fasting and prayer and worshiping the Lord, and the Lord had a word to speak. Set apart Saul and Barnabas to the work that I have called them. Kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement. They were worshiping. They were fasting. They were already, you know, engaging and leaning in uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the Lord in that moment. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven forcefully advance and forceful men lay hold of it. Um, they were not going to be denied what God wanted to do in their life as a group, as a unit, as a, as a, as a people. Hey, surround yourself with those who will not be denied what God is speaking, who will press in, who, will, who, will, um, who do not allow the comfort of yesterday to prevent them from pressing toward tomorrow. I love where the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, eagerly desire the greater gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Boy, I think as a church, we can so, or as a people, and I'll speak personally, I don't want to speak generally for everybody, but I think it's so easy to become comfortable in just saying, yeah, man, I'm good with what the Holy Spirit's activity is in my life right now. I'm good. And and I'm just going to settle back here and kind of, and I'm telling you, when you begin to settle in that way, it becomes very, you can begin to isolate yourself or surround yourself with people themselves that are kind of isolating. And next thing you know, you're, you're, you're being drained and you're not being regularly filled. Boy, my heart, my, everything in me is like, man, let's press in, eagerly desire the greater gifts. This is a season to lean in. And not just this season, every season is. I want to encourage you. And not even just surround yourself with people, be that person. Be the person in those relationships in your life that provoke, that challenge, that press in to hear uh, from the Lord. Uh, many times because of my position, people will reach out to me and say, Pastor Ben, I'm, I'm praying about thus and such. Do you, you know, do you, do you, um, you know, would you pray with me? And I said, certainly pray with them. And uh, they say, do you hear anything from the Lord? I said, you know, sometimes I do hear from the Lord. Sometimes I don't. But if somebody comes to me and asks me, hey, would you, Pray with me through this. I, I that's a great. I, they take great value in that and spend time trying to lean in to hear from the Lord. And if I don't hear from the Lord, I come back and say, "Listen, I leaned leaned into the Lord and I didn't hear anything, but I but I did pray and press into that. Be the one who presses in for the people in your life for their tomorrow. Be the one in your friendships that challenges others with a kingdom mindset, with a kingdom vision. Um, why uh, look for it? when you can be the one in others and be the one that challenges others. Um, I'm convinced that as you seek the Lord and as you press into the Lord and as you encourage and build others up around you, 
you will find yourselves in situations where you yourself are provoked and challenged and perhaps even in a moment where someone lays hands on you and uh, you are sent off uh, for, a, for a work of the Lord that he may have for you. Quick story, there was a pastor in uh, New York City um, named Pastor Rob Johansson. He was pastor, Pastor Rob has, uh, has passed away. Um, but Pastor Rob was, uh, uh, in the late 90s, was instrumental in some moments of my life. I don't know how exactly it all worked out, but I got hired by Pastor Rob to work at his house. Uh, he pastors a, a church and pastored a church in, uh, in Queens, and uh, he hired me on to, to work at his house. And, and so I spent some one-on-one -on -one time with Pastor Rob. And I'm telling you, it was some of the most valuable time uh, that, that I can recall in my life. So it's so instrumental. And I remember one time we had picked up, we had loaded up a van with a bunch of cobblestone bricks and we were driving down the Long Island Expressway in the middle of pouring rain. I was driving the van, which I had no business driving the van down there. I'm like, you know, this, you know, 19 year old kid just driving whatever I was in New York City. And like, oh, it was like this crazy moment that the, the wheels on the, the cobblestones were leaned up the back and the front, felt like the front wheels were off the road. And I'm driving like this, trying to look over the dash, which I still look over the dash sometimes and, you know, uh, if I need to. And, uh, but Pastor Rob was in between the seat, facing me. He was in the pastor's seat, but he's turned and facing me, leaned over, laying hands on me, not, not, not commissioning me for anything, but grabbing a hold of my arm while I was trying to drive the car, grabbing a hold of my arm, passionately talking to me about pursuing the Lord and not getting caught in the paralysis of action because I don't, I, because I don't hear from the Lord. Or I'm, I'm, and he, what he was saying was, he said, Ben, Move forward in God. Don't, don't be stagnant. Don't just sit around and do nothing. Paul was on his way somewhere and the spirit of Jesus intervened and said, don't go there, go here. You know, and, and, and Paul was, was actively pursuing the Lord. We see it here in the missionary journey as the Lord laid hands on him. He knew he was called. He knew he was set apart. And as he went, he consistently remained open uh, to what the Lord was doing in his life. And as Pastor Rob just laid hands on me, grabbed a hold of my arm, it impacted my life. It provoked me not to become stagnant, but to surround myself even with people that provoke me and do not allow me to become stagnant. And that's my encouragement to all of you today as we just read Acts chapter one, uh, 13, uh, verses one through three there today. Uh, see yourself uh, in your own, see in your own life, just being surrounded by people that provoke you and challenge you. One more thing just as we close is I, I consider about people I surround myself with. I, I, uh, I have a rule in my life, just a personal rule, and you can, you can take it or leave it. Uh, but I call it the the veto rule, and uh, it's I've, I allow a couple people in my life that have veto power. Probably a little bit more. If anybody came to me and said they were concerned about something, I would most likely give it give it ear. But there are people in my life that that I trust to say to have a veto stamp to say no, Ben, I don't believe. Um, I'm not with you on that. And those two people are my wife and Pastor Rick. And uh, I, lean into, I lean into them because at the end of the day, uh, I need people that provoke me and challenge me and are ready to say no to me if need be. Uh, <laughs> I need that. And I think we all do. And, uh, but I also uh, uh, see in them people that uh, celebrate and you know, get behind the things of God uh, in my life as I do in their lives. And that's just, uh, just an encouragement to you a couple years ago. I was going to do a, it was right after my head injury, and I was going to do a Tough Mudder, which involved me, you know, doing 10 miles or 12 miles of like obstacle courses and rope climbs, and I don't know, I just was excited to do it, and uh, I remember it was like two days before I left, and I kind of got, I kind of got, uh, felt like from Pastor Rick, maybe I, maybe he didn't want me to do it, I, I kind of was like, I don't know if he wants me to do it or not, just something he said, and so I went home to Kayla, and I said, honey, should I do this tough mutter? And uh, she's like, if you want to. And I said, no, no, no. If you had, if you could say yes or no to me, what would you say? She said, no. I said, okay, then I'm not doing it. I, uh, I'll take that as a word of the Lord uh, and, and uh, helping me in my physical life. Uh, but I, I'm so grateful uh, for the people around me uh, that continue to sharpen me and shape me. And I encourage you as well today. Uh, surround yourself with people that will do the same for you. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Lord, that you put people in our life on purpose, uh, Lord, to help us, to shape us, to sharpen us, uh, to provoke us, to challenge us. 
And uh, Lord, we receive that from those people. And uh, I pray, Lord, today, even as I as I, I share about being challenged and provoked, uh, Lord, we'll probably be challenged and provoked today. Lord, let it be for your glory and for your kingdom advancement. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.